development has inherited this property from a builder that probably wasn't capable of building this building, the first building. And they've came in and finished this, the first building and it's cost them tremendous amount of money. Is it their fault? Probably because they walked into it. But when they were building that first building, no one's sitting there, no one's talking about when Giorgio's was there, when the city probably told them to tear the building down, which that building probably could have been in operation. I don't know if that's true or not. Mr. Forrest, would you like to add into that? I'm sorry, could that build? Giorgio's. It probably could have been utilized. Yeah, it was a going business when it shut and the property was sold. Okay, so in return, Mr. Mayor, uh, when you're saying to bring the the property back into where it was originally, why don't you just cough up the money for a new building for Giorgio since the city of Wooddale told them to, that it should come down? I, we've been looking at this eyesore for at my, least five years. My and point? I am sick of it and I am not, I, I wanna ensure that whatever we decide tonight, there is a responsible party for the um, upkeep of it as well as a restoration today. I, I understand that, but what I'm saying here is right development has bent over backwards to try to, to uh, approve the, the property of moving forward. Mm -hmm. is, it our fault? is it their fault because the economy took a dump? No. Alderman Woods, you talked about the letter of credit. Are you talking about keeping the whole letter of credit open or are you talking about reducing it? Keeping the whole letter of credit open. Okay, uh, excuse me. So uh, I need, to, Mr. Forrest, I need to get some parameters to this discussion of how can we ensure the integrity of the property and allow right to go forward so take the building down. with the um, with the resubdivision. Mr. Mermis? Uh, I, I mean, I think we're all pretty much in agreement. We obviously want this project to move forward. Yeah. Alderman Wesley's correct. Uh, Mr. Thornton's been nothing but cooperative, especially these past couple months to get to where we're at tonight. Um, moving forward, as far as a letter of credit, I know I'm not an attorney. Um, sometimes I wish I was. Um, but for this project, I mean, I think we're pretty much to the point where we'll be closed out by next week. Um, I think that's where Alderman Woods was going to make sure that what's been started within the past couple of days is completed as far as the grading and making sure that the site looks halfway decent. Obviously, it's still a development site. So I think moving forward, we check on that. That'll be done by next week. Then we could close this project out, close this letter of credit out, but we will need to establish a new letter of credit with the new developers once we get that going. But until we get this closed out, yeah. we can't get that new letter of credit going. And from what I'm hearing, everybody's in agreement uh, with getting this closed out, you know, pending, make sure everything's, you know, graded or whatever. The only question I'm hearing is whether or not we want to keep the fence. Um, okay, so, so then the new letter of credit, there is a distinct possibility, though, that when we close out the first one, because we all agree that it's okay, the property could get unruly again without having the new letter of credit, correct? That would really, if the site gets out of compliance, then that would be really a property maintenance issue. Mm -hmm. And our remedy would be to go after the new owners of the property to have them maintain it. Okay. Again, building one, which is the condo building that's there, is totally completed. All of their curbs are in. They've got the final lift of asphalt on the parking lot. I mean, that little one third of the mm -hmm. project is standalone by itself, done, completed, other than putting in a nice finished edge along the east property line where it abuts mm -hmm. what's going to be the subdivision. You know, there's really nothing else that needs to be done there. All the work's been inspected and approved. And, uh, you know, so basically closing out this letter of credit will you know we close it out for right development and then xyz corporation that's purchasing the property and are going to build the next building they're going to have to come forward with their own letter of credit okay 
so it looks like we're down to whether the fence stays or goes and a final approval be if we pass this tonight a final approval before our council meeting to officially pass it that says that the property is in compliance would that be correct yeah. okay so fence and final approval of um, meeting our criteria of meeting criteria okay um, so so I'm gonna start calling on people Alderman Coles right. well, it's room one six story yeah. Family living there already one. It moved out to uh, Downers Grove. Let's let's take and get this one set up. It's almost set up, and let's get it going. And we're wasting our time just talking about a fence. Let them put the fence. They all got to put up a fence when they do the work, anyway, because they. Have to put up a fence around the around the thing when they do construction work, so they have to put up a fence. I don't know why we're wasting so much time. The plans are set; it's all set to go. We blew one one uh, six-story unit already, and now let's get this one up. It's been emptied long enough, and it's an eyesore. Everybody that comes through Wooddale sees this empty lot along that condominium there and say, oh, wow, look at this. It looks like it's out, we're down in a farm someplace. And we're going back to 1910. All right, so let's get it done and get it over with. All right, right, Wesley? I'd like to hear from Mr. Thornton. Okay, I, I'm going to recognize two others and then we'll... Uh, Mr. Thornton. Um, Alderman Woods. Once again, I think we're getting off track. We want to approve everything so Mr. Wright can move forward with the development of this project. We're not looking to hinder that in any way or add any more time to it than they've already spent on it. The only thing we're doing is holding back that letter of credit till we verify all the things that were done that were supposed to be done. And there's a new player in the game. Right now, I don't know who the building goes to. Whether he has a letter of credit, not a letter, but at least a, there's a new owner taking over the, the property. And I would say that the fence should stay up because it's not returned to its natural state. Thank you. Alderman Eugene Wesley. Okay. I'm in favor of leaving the fence as is up there, providing that he does, like Steve, uh, that he put some screening over it. Because obviously, this you tell me the turnaround of this is going to be pretty quick. I take it that's what I'm getting from you. So I would say within another month, they will be in here pulling permits. Oh, I doubt it. For two months. I would hope they would be coming in for site plan approval. I mean, obviously, they're going to have to prepare blueprints. They're going right. to have to get the, uh, you know, the subdivider's agreement, developer's agreement done, which is actually in the works right now. Um, so my question yeah. to you, and I guess it will be born there, is he's willing to put some screening fence up there meanwhile? Okay, uh, Mr. So Thornton, I'm sure, can yeah. address that. Yeah. I'm going to call in Mr. Thornton. Now, uh, Mr. Thornton, thank you for your patience. And if you can come thank before you. us and um, either location and talk to us about the fence as well as anything else that you would wish to address us on. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kevin Thornton with Wright Development Group in Wooddale Station. I just want to address a couple of items that the City Council had a question and or <coughs> concern about regarding the fencing. Um, and actually going back to the Giorgios, we did, you know, buy a banquet hall. We were told by the city that to tear it down. In hindsight, being 2020, had we left it up, we could have gotten a little bit of money out of a, a a functioning banquet hall. Instead, we tore it down. We put in a million dollars worth of underground water detention, storm water system, sanitary system, water systems that were inspected, approved by the city, and done. The only letter of credit money being held right now is for asphalt and curbing gutter for this piece of property that we are selling. So the letter of credit that's being held right now is for future asphalt and and uh, curb work that we're, we are never going to do. The stormwater systems were done and inspected. 
all those things were completed. The fence, again, we were told actually to put the fence up. We did put a screening up, and if anybody remembers how badly that went, those screens, what happens is the wind takes them and it tears them off. Okay. We tried to repair them over and over again, but it literally tears the grommets right off of them. I mean, with the winds that we get here, with the thunderstorms in the summer, there's no way they'll stay on it. What they do is they actually look worse because they tear off and they're float and they're actually whipping out into Irving Park Road and everything else. Um, we have paid for the fence through till the end of the year. It's not a matter of money. It's a matter of liability. While there's no dangerous potholes or anything else, we know we all live in a litigious society. If somebody goes in there, a kid, and gets up on the fire hydrants that are in, or the, if anybody's been by there, there's a transformer that's there, and somebody gets themselves hurt, even though it's their fault, the, um, the idea of attractive nuisance falls in line. As a, as a developer and a contractor, we owe it to try to deter people from hurting themselves. I know that sounds silly. It's like you see a hot stove, you don't touch it. But unless you put up a barrier to try to make people not touch that hot stove, you're liable as a developer and contractor. Again, it's not a matter of money. We've paid through the fence through the end of the year. That's not an issue. It's a matter of liability. We don't want somebody going in there, getting up on the fire hydrant, falling down, and then suing us. Um, again, back to the... Um, the way that it works, we do have a contract in place. One of the contingencies of the contract is obviously to resubdivide it, get the preliminary approval on the 180 uh, unit facility that we've brought before city uh, committees. I think back in January was approved. Once that is completed, then the owner has uh, 10 days in order to close on the property. So they're moving, they wanna move pretty quickly. I don't wanna speak for them, but I know the way our contract is written with them, they have 10 days to close. They'll take it on, uh, take the property on cl uh, quickly. Re again, back to the letter of credit. The letter of credit being held right now is only for curb and gutter and asphalt for the phase two. So there's really no need. There would be a new letter of credit by the new owner, depending on how they're going to structure their deal. And like I said, my understanding from staff, is they've already started the um, a developer's agreement process. So if, does anybody else have any questions for me? I just want to try to explain, you know, our, you know, thinking behind it and why the fence is there. And it's not, I know nobody likes the fence and we tried the black. And like I said, if anybody remembers, it blew off in Irving Park because I came out here a couple winters ago in my dress slacks and I was trying to get it back on there too. We ended up tearing it off because it was just so ragged because of the wind. So anybody have any questions for me? Yeah. Um it, it sounds like leaving the fence up may be a, a, a good way to go. And uh, what are your thoughts of putting in like the plastic slats within the fence itself, maybe a green color or something that would uh, look a little more attractive? Again, anything on those fences, because it's such a wide open area, they end up, it, it either will knock the fences down, which happened at one time. So we actually went back and permanently installed the ones on the Irving Park Road. That was my biggest concern. It was Irving Park mm -hmm. and on the uh, Western property line because of our uh, building. Uh, we still own um, 18 of those units in building one. We only sold 12. Of the 12 that sold, four are bank owned right now. That's how bad it is. That's how bad the condominium market is. I think I've, I've told you guys this before, and I'm not trying to shock anybody, but our appraised value of those units is 85,000 a piece. Oh. It costs us 185,000 hard cost to build them. Oh. We have uh, one bank owned properties on the market right now for 89.9 and they can't sell it. My so goodness. the only, uh, only out we have right now is to finish the units and rent them uh, we are getting a lot of activity in that, but one thing we want to do is go through this process, finish up the sale of of building two, yeah. or the site of two, so then we can finish the units in building one and rent them. Because right now we're paying, you know, we paid uh, last a couple weeks ago. I went to DuPage County and gave them another thirty thousand dollar check. We've paid about two hundred thirty thousand dollars to date in property taxes for empty land and units that, by the way, back to the units. Units that are there are actually drywalled. They're trimmed. Doors are in. 
The only things that were lacking, as a matter of fact, all the electrical was done. All the light fixtures were installed, switches, outlets, everything. The only thing that weren't installed were cabinets because we were going to let people select their own cabinets, flooring so they could select their own flooring, and of course, countertops and appliances. Everything else are, is done. So from a permitting standpoint, we're really only looking at paint, carpet, cabinets, and plumbing trim. And we do want to finish those last units and rent those out because we are paying out on those units every month and they're just sitting there. Okay, so what I want to do is get a motion on, on the floor. So Mr. Forrest, what would be the ideal motion to um, take care of the resubdivision and any of the next steps that would be required? Okay. All right, I think uh, would be sufficient to just recommend approval of the subdivision. Really, that's initially what, what this item is, is approval of proposed subdivision. Approval. Resubdivision, I'm sorry. Submitted. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion to approve the uh, resubmitted. Uh, Wooddale Memory Care Resubdivision. Wooddale Memory Care Resubdivision, Correct. subject to attorney approval and approval, of course, at City Council. Second. So there's a motion, a second. Any uh, Anything else on the question? Um, Alderman Shockey? Yeah, as a layperson, I'm trying to understand what's going on here between these letters of credit and so forth. And if I'm reading it correctly, it's a little over a million dollars that we have the letter of credit right now, and you'd like it reduced to 336. Is that correct? Yes. Mr. Forrest? Yes, Alderman Shockey. Uh, no, I can see with all these figures and everything on here how it would be confusing. Uh, this letter that we're looking at is dated May 28, 2008. So there have been subsequent reductions in the original letter of credit. This was probably their first request for reduction of the letter of credit from 1233000 down to 387376 right. So currently the city has a letter of credit from Wright Development in the amount of 387336 Now what we have, what, how we're looking at this is with this resubdivision approved, these are going to be two standalone projects. The Wooddale Station condominium building is going to be on lot one. That project, for all intents and purposes, is finished. All the site work is done. All the improvements are in. All but 10 of the units have their stoves, their refrigerators, their cabinets, their tile, everything. They still have 10 units in there that they need to just do a little finish out to uh, allow people to inhabit them. But as far as the exterior of the building, the site work, one third of that project is done. May, this may this letter of credit, what, I'm sorry. It, 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 what, what, I, what is on my mind though is if we give back the letter of credit and this other firm does not build this new facility, we're stuck with the property that's going to sit there again for another six years undeveloped. Is that, am I, am I correct in that? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. That, yes, please. I think I can try to, I know where you're going with this. The letter of credit's got nothing. This is just one project that's being closed out that's done. This allows the next firm to go in there and build on that separate subdivision. They'll have to establish a new letter of credit. It'd be no different than, I mean, the property's going to be, va if they don't do anything, the property will be a subject be subject to property maintenance codes. You can't establish a letter of credit for a non-project. There's no project until we do this and clear out the letter of credit. This, this, we, we cannot keep their letter of credit anymore. They're done. Well, they're, There's nothing I? left for them to do. <clears throat> I'm still trying to understand. Bear, please bear with me. If we give back this letter of credit and then other company decides not to do anything, we're stuck with the stuck. property sitting there, empty. Well, we can keep the letter of credit now, and we're still stuck with the property being empty. There's not. Wait, we can do what? We can keep the letter of credit now, 
and get sued, and we'd still the, the property would still be empty. It, it has nothing to do with getting the property filled. Which just has to do with the building. We can't actually get the property filled until we release the letter of credit. Okay, first of all, we didn't have anything in our packet showing that the letter of credit has been reduced. Uh, I'd, at least it's not on my... Yeah, it should be, it should be like the third or fourth page in on this topic. Uh, I can't find it. Anyway, it sounds like all we need is a letter of credit for enough to finish those apartments so that they don't walk away and leave them empty. Is that so? The letter of credit doesn't cover the apartments. It's it's totally this totally separate issue. Letter of credits for the major site work. Well, how do which has how already do, been all approved? How does the city make sure that that building isn't just abandoned? And nothing's done with those other 12 uh, apartments. Is it 12 that are empty? Again, as a layman, I don't under, you know, I'm. Right. Mm. Uh, well, again, it's the letter of credit is just for the, out, the outside work outside of the walls of the building. Anything on the inside of the building, uh, you know, those are handled by a separate cash bond when they come in and get the building permits. I, I mean, the, build, the, the units are, for all intents and purposes, done other than decorating. I mean, 20 of the units are completely finished. 10 of the units need to finish basically decorating, put in the countertop, put the cabinets. But why is Alderman Woods, who knows more about this mm -hmm. than I, I do much more, why is he asking for that letter of credit to stay there? Did you hear Alderman Woods? Did you hear me? Okay, I'm going to recognize Alderman Woods, um, and, and I'm going to call the Once again, that was my intent that we pass this, except for that. This has become, I knew that this was going to become an issue. And we can argue the finer nuances of the letter of credit and what's done, what's not done, when a project's complete, when it's not complete. Uh, I, I would hope that the representative from right development would like to move forward and we could address this issue a week from today everything else will be put in place that you can move forward with your project i'm going to call the question will the minute taker call the roll it's in the affirmative there's a second a motion and a second but just read subdivision yes and subject to attorney review Nothing. And compliance with restoration. Nothing to do with the credit. Oh, the what? Letter of credit. Not that I'm aware of, Mr. Forrest. It's just a subdivision. Sure, it's just a subdivision. Okay, thank you. Alderman Woods? Yes. Alderman Lazara? Yes. Alderman Winger? Yes. Alderman Eugene Wesley? Yes. Alderman Szymarski? Yes. Alderman Shockey? Yes. Alderman Coles? Yes. Alderman Roy Wesley. Stank. Uh, motion does pass. Uh, next item is items for future meetings. Uh, does anyone wish to have anything considered? I'm sorry, Mr. Clicker, did I miss one? Uh, yes, there's one more agenda item. Uh, report and recommendation for the planned unit development, Wooddale Memory Care. Oh, I, I see. Okay. So then what would... That uh, is there any other discussion needed on that? Well, this is again we're apples and oranges with with uh, with the resubdivision and with the approval of the planned unit development. Mm -hmm. So now, if the city, I'm sorry, uh, the mayor wanted to come. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I don't know. Did you go into the hostage? Before you go to memory care. Do we need a separate motion on the letter of credit because that was part of the package tonight, right? Then attorney. No, review. not at this point. No. Okay. Okay. So now the conversation, is it true that it becomes looking at the proposal of the memory care unit and what they're looking to do or, okay. Okay. So do you want to maybe give us a little background on that? Yes, again, uh, originally, uh, 
this concept was presented to the Community Development Commission for their consideration back in January of 2012 and received unanimous approval and recommendation to come forward to committee and council. Um, what we're doing now, we're, I mean, we're going to be considering allowing a planned unit development for this lot that you have just approved the resubdivision of. So attached to your packet is a rendering of what the anticipated building is going to look like. And we will need to uh, approve the planned unit development. Part of that is going to be approving a new developer's agreement, which is in the works. Uh, the city attorney and the attorney for the purchaser have been working back and forth over the last week and a half or so. Uh, it's my understanding that a revised uh, draft has been approved by the city attorney and sent to the purchaser's attorney for their review and approval. We anticipate hearing from that, you know, hearing back from them. Uh, you know, I was hoping to hear back this afternoon, but have not yet. So, but we expect to hear from them. If the city attorney and the purchaser's attorneys can agree on the terms for the new developer's agreement, that will be forwarded to you for your review as well. But what we're considering now would be approving the planned unit development in the TCB zoning district to permit the construction of a six story, 70 foot tall, mixed use assisted living and memory care facility at 276 East Irving. Uh, their plan is to have support services on the first floor, restaurant, gym, spa, library, uh, <coughs> that sort of thing. Two floors of memory care. What's involved in memory care, from my understanding, it's basically kind of almost a, a lockdown facility so that the residents cannot just wander out and wander out into Irving Park or onto the railroad tracks, whatever they want to do. And then there will be three floors of assisted living for seniors who are still somewhat mobile, uh, you know, able to take care of themselves to certain degrees. Uh, that is an allowable use in the TCB zoning district. Um, attached to this memo, there was a memo from Keith Lecce from Bond Dixon. Uh, you know, he kind of breaks down some of the terms of this. Uh, and as I say, there is a current um, draft of the developer's agreement uh, that I'm hoping is going to be approved, and then we can bring that forward. Okay. Um, and, and then who is the developer? They have formed a uh, LLC uh, called Wooddale Memory Care LLC. It's an Illinois corporation that they've formed to do this. Okay, so, so it's not like a well-known developer. It's just a group of people that decided to do this? It is a, an operator of other facilities of this nature it, that they, they are looking to expand their portfolio, yes. Okay. Okay, so is there a motion? I'll make the motion to approve it. Is there a second on second. that motion? Um, I see there are Alderman Shock or Alderman Woods. I'm not sure which was first. Okay. Deferring Alderman Woods. So a motion and a second. Anything quick on the question? Uh, Mr. Mermis. Yeah, I just want to clarify that the motion was to approve the PUD pending the forthcoming developer's agreement. Yes. And that is the motion that is agreed the motion. upon. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion does carry. Are there any other items for future meetings that we'd like to bring up? Alderman Ray Wesley. Madam Chairman, um, we've been sitting up here for time to get things done. Um, I would like a full report on the swipe cards that we approved. Um, months and months and months ago. Um, the CIP has been done for months and we haven't received that yet. Um, the windows have not been done yet. The roof hasn't been done. And we've proved those things. And um, the things aren't getting done in a timely fashion. So, I mean, someone should be accountable for this stuff. and. Mm -hmm. I would like a full report on all this stuff. I mean, we approved it, and nothing's getting done. You want to get, give us an update now, Mr. Mermis? 
Yeah, I've been uh, uh, talked to about this topic, and I've already formulated a plan to, to give you guys the information that you're looking for. It's going to start uh, to, to be included in packets uh, come July, it, as far as better tracking of all projects. And, and perhaps put it on a July agenda meeting to, to just kind of take us through each Well, project. I mean, basically we have, you know, X amount of projects per year. Um, the plan would be to give, um, you know, monthly updates on where projects are at within your agenda packet. So I don't really see a need for an agenda item. It's items that have already passed, just mm -hmm. what their status is. What are you looking for, Alderman Ray Wesley? What I'm, the CPI was passed months ago. We should have it by now. And, and I don't know, who, who's supposed to put this together? Mr. Wilson? I, I would think that is. So why don't we have it? The swipe cards were, were approved by this council months ago, months or not a year ago. I mean, how long does a project take? I mean, Mr. Mermis. Yeah, we're talking about a couple different issues here. One is a, a individual project which we can talk to uh, Alderman Wesley offline or put a report in the packet about specific project delays. But in general, we've never had the type of reporting that he's referring to before. So that's why I'm saying that it's going to be developed and forthcoming in July, a report consisting of all of the projects. We've never <coughs> had that before. Mm -hmm. so. I think he's looking for the hard copy finalized um, CIP book. The CIP book, the hard copy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the finance director produces that, and I'm not, I'll have to speak with him. He's out this week as far as when the final copy is going to be completed. Okay, because that's one of your main things, right, to get the hard copy. The hard copy, but I'm, I'm starting looking for accountability. I mean, things are getting done. Mr. Mervis? Also, keep in mind, uh, while the CIP is passed on May 1st, it's for the whole fiscal year, so you can't get all the projects done in one, one half or a month and a half. Right. Agreed. So I, I have to believe that the hard copy, will, we should expect it in July. Along with a new type of reporting system, too. Okay. Does that answer the concern? Something I can follow. I'm sorry, what? Something I can follow. Yep. Okay. Anything else? I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Why? Well, I, I will obtain a uh, five minute recess. Five minutes old, guys. Time and you. Make the minute taker note that same people are present. Any motion to approve the minutes for May 10th, 2012? That is my motion. Second. Question, questions, concerns? Motion. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number. Uh, I better do both. Um, item number four. Report and recommendation to award a contract for reconstruction of Stone Street project, not to exceed $592,252.70. That is my motion. Second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Opposed? No one opposed? Good. No, I just said I don't hear two eyes. Okay. Next is to award a contract. Item number five. Report on recommendation uh, contract awards to Baxter and Woodman. Woods, Woodman. Not to exceed $26,330.00. That's for Booster Station 4. That is my motion. Concerns? Question? Yes. Alderman Roy Wesley. Ben, is this for engineering? No. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Kramer. Correct. This is for um, RPR services. Uh, someone to come out and inspect on a part-time basis the um, installation of those pumps, electrical wiring, 
and proper um, um, mate, or, uh, proper uh, working condition. I apologize, had a brain freeze. For, uh, for booster four and booster five one, so one's going to Potter and one's going to Rikert, correct, two locations. You actually approved the, um, the award of the contract to independent mechanical last, uh, last uh, city council meeting. So this is just the work order for Baxter and Wooden to complete the inspection services, RE services on a part-time basis. So that is my motion. Okay, there was a second. Any other questions? Alderman Roy Wesley, was that it? That's it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Opposed. Okay, we go to item number six. Stat, uh, uh, payment made to MQ Construction for the alleyway reconstruction program, not to see $175,102.70. That is my motion. Second. Question. Uh, Mike? Mike. Sure. Mike. John, uh, first. How many more payments are left on the alley, alley uh, reconstruction? Mr. Kramer. This payment was basically for that last alley between Maple and Catalpa. There are some items still remaining on the bulk contract. We've got some uh, vandalism damage that needs to be replaced, but otherwise all items have been taken care of. All landscapes been installed. We'll have to have some supplemental watering uh, due to the lack of significant rainfall since we put sod down. That was the kiss of death to put some sod down. So um, we'll have that and then whatever the vandalism damage costs, um, obviously we'll be uh, picking up those. But uh, you'll, I think that's basically the amount of the retention, which is approximately $26,000. So it may be under that, depending. Thank you. Alderman Coles? No, oh, they, he answered the question. I was gonna ask what alley. Hey, Alderman Short? Yeah, it's Maple. Oh. Yeah, what kind of damage was done? Someone rode a bike through the alleys once um, some panels were poured. They had their um, barricades up. They had snow fence around it. They had visqueen over the top of it. Someone rode a bike on it. So we're not gonna re-pour the alleys. We'll use our decks, which is basically a compound that fills in that bike mark and then smooth it over so the alley's flat. There's no structural issue with the alley. We just don't want water sitting there, freeze-thaw cycle, and then a cracked panel. So again, just some minor vandalism. It wouldn't pay to have somebody stick around until this stuff was dry, would it? Traditionally, they do stick around um, up until the point that it gets tacky and you can't carve in it. But when you have someone physically ride a bike and they're, you know, maybe my size, you can still make an indention on it if you drive on it, things like that. Traditionally, you're there long enough to make sure when it's wet, someone doesn't carve you know, I love Lucy in it or anything like that. But as far as the actual weight, you could be there depending on humidity, temperature outside, you could be there 12, 14 hours. Thank you. Okay, I have a second, I have. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, uh, pay request number one for water main project to MQ construction Placement project not to exceed $183,218.40. That is my motion. Second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Not opposed. No oppose. Item number eight, report recommendation, pay request to Orman Streetlight Project, Ellen Nelson, not to that could exceed $76,613.39. That is my motion. Second. Questions? Almond Coles. That's for the street lights that they're putting up on Woodville Road? The decorated lights, yes, sir. The decorated lights. How, how, when will they be done with them? They're getting pretty near done with them. Scrammer. You'll have lights on the, uh, more than likely the south side of Irving uh, completed possibly tomorrow, more than likely Monday. I'm even told we're gonna have lights lit up on the north side of the street for the weekend. I thought they ran out of tops because they put everything in but the top. I guess they put the tops in last. 
Yeah, um, the ba or the actual stem of the light yeah. is light enough where two guys can lift it up. So it's easier for them to do the installation that way rather than bolt it together on the ground, yeah. use a crane truck, lift it up, set it. So they can do it faster by putting the stems up and then mounting that actual top lantern style light with a bucket that, truck later wiring it up. That's what I thought. Anything else? On the short, I mean, uh, Mike? This, uh, the, the payment for the ornamental street lights, did that come out of this year's budget or was that, last, was it, did you guys already allocate that last year? Framer. Last, con last council. The payments were actually split between last year's CIP ending April 30th and then this year. We actually missed it. So okay. actually all the money will come out of this year's budget. I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item number nine. Uh, Favorite request number one to Maxon Construction Corporation uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant Phase Number 1A Project Amount of $309,681.00. And zero cents. That is my motion. Question, Omar Shark. I don't understand what uh, the project to Maxim means. That is, that is a company that's doing the treatment plant construction. This is part Maxim payment that they put temporary piping in. That is part of uh, project payments. Okay. Well, I have the floor. If I can make a suggestion, if we want to put the item number on the first page of each item so that we can follow along. Uh, there's a number of pages from a n number of these items, and I'm not sure where to stop flipping. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let me move on here. Excuse me, guys, I'm trying something new here. All right, item number nine, I item number 10, Board of Recreation Vehicle Replacement, 456, Nexus C, $212,547.00. That is my motion. Second. Questions? Mr. Shark. John, you still haven't found out how much we can get for the old truck. Scramer. When I spoke with Standard Equipment, they believe that they're going to offer us a trade-in price of tw between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars. My estimate is, if they're still holding to that number when we purchase the new one, perhaps we will place that vehicle on public salary at a higher reserve limit and see if we can sell it for a little more money to get an additional trade-in amount. That's our plan right now. Thank you. Okay. Star Woods. John, does this uh, truck have anything more or better than the old one or function or perform better? Kramer? Bottom line, the Q's system in our existing truck that does televising the systems out of date and obsolete. So really the camera systems night and day better, you know, worlds apart as far as just user convenience, drop down menus, all computer controlled, no longer um, VHS tape converted to DVD, it's all digital format. So as far as the actual camera system, completely night and day. Truck, basically it's a, it's a van, a van body, van clip with a box unit behind it. Um, there is a sink in the new one so people can wash up um, you know, they have water on board. They can do some minor flushing activities. Other than that, there's three monitors opposed to the single monitor now. Um, there's some communication equipment that we didn't have before. When someone was, you know, flushing, we weren't able, we had to pull up, get the city radio talk, which interfered with some of the systems. So it's just an updated system with a few perks as far as the sink and things like that go. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12. 
Item number 11, I'm sorry. Board vehicle replacement 253. Report and recommendation vehicle replacement 253 not to exceed $12,435.00. That is my motion. I'll second. Questions, concerns? Alderman Sharp. What are we going to do with the old one? Mr. Kramer. Right now, we do a lot of loaning of the aero board to the police department to use for um, traffic stops, seatbelt checks, things like that. We'll probably keep it through the summer while they use it during their high point. So they have one and we still have one in order to do our normal work out on the street where we need to have proper um, traffic control up. So that'll be beneficial. After that, this really has run its useful life. Um, it's kind of a maintenance headache right now. Um, this one is a diesel unit. The new one is all battery powered and solar, a lot less aggravation. We will more than likely sell the old one or auction it off on our public salary. Web, our public surplus website. Any other questions? I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12, report and recommendation. Vehicle uh, not to exceed $10,360. That is my motion. Second. I have a second. Question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Polls? Motion carries. Items for future meetings. I do have one. I will be bringing back the item that we removed off the agenda, uh, hopefully next committee. Um, anyone else have anything? Alderman Roy Wesley. Um, I should have brought this back up to number four. Uh, John, could you go through it on how, how a contract gets awarded? Who makes, who makes out, I'm going to use an example of a lamp. Who makes out that contract? Mr. Kramer. Are you talking the award of a lamps contract? Or are you talking a design contract or an RE contract? This contract in specific? Sure, you could use that. Um, Is it as part of our design agreement with Baxter and Woodman? There's a representative from Baxter and Woodman that puts the contract documents together once we have awarded or realized what the lowest responsible or responsive bidder. Um, traditionally, once it goes to committee and this project gets approved, like this one, for instance, the contract documents would get sent to Baxter and Woodman. They would draw up the documents. Then they would send them to the, co to the actual contractor to be signed. Traditionally, in the past, we've waited until we had full approval from the city council. Um, and now we're doing it as soon as we have the committee approval and awarding a, or giving a, um, letter of that the city has an intent of completing this project and then the signature from the contractor comes back is signed after the city council um, approves it at the council meeting and then it's sent to the contractor it's sent the city clerk keeps a copy the engineer keeps a copy and public works keeps a copy I hope I answered that in the oh my Roy Wesley so the contracts are signed before the city council approval no, Mr. Kramer. Not in all instances. In some instances, they are. So does the contracts come back to you, or does it go back to Baxman Wooden? The contracts, once they're signed by the contractor, get mailed back to Baxter and Woodman. And then Baxter and Woodman executes them to the city if they have not already been signed, either by the mayor, the city clerk, and then they get, or, uh, yes, the city clerk, and then they get distributed back out once they're completely signed. So Baxman Woodman should be responsible for all those contracts then because they're making them out. So. Okay, any other a, items for future um, meeting? Yes. I would like to talk about the, um, of an engineer to take some, to 
take it away from Mr. Kramer. I don't know if that's a personnel item or if it's at a committee would, level. I believe that would go under finance. Am I right? To take all engineering away from Mr. Kramer. Mr. Art, Mr. Art Woods, future items? Yeah, I'd like to, uh, I'm pretty sure it goes under public works, but uh, bring back talking about the, uh, for lack of a better term right now, the specialty gardener slash somebody to take care of uh, you know, the city. Okay, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Any other items? Um, obtain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you.